Hello everyone, my name is Sun Tudang and I'm studying at La Trobe University in Melbourne, Australia. I'd like to contribute to the conference by making this virtual presentation. In the next 15 minutes or so, I'd like to talk about the factors influencing teachers' use of ICT in language teaching, a case study of Hanoi University, Vietnam. This is the outline of my presentation and I will take you through item by item. Well, first of all, I'd like to just start with the definition of the term ICT. And within the scope of my uh, study, ICT means computers and uh, internet-based technologies. Well, as you know, that ICT has been applied in education and training in many countries in the world. It is claimed that ICT brings about a lot of benefits the benefits for the teachers and benefits for the learners as well. Well, on the one hand, we can say that ICT brings a lot of benefits for the teachers and for the learners. Uh, but on the other hand, well, there exist some barriers to the ICT use. As you can see in this table, the barriers can take place at different levels, at the teacher level and at the institutional level, at the external level and at the internal level. The internal barriers are difficult to recognize because they exist in the minds of the teachers or of the university leaders, so it's very difficult to tackle. From the literature in this area, we can also find the ICT enabling factors, and those factors can also take place at teachers' level, institutional level, external level, and internal level. Uh, my case study is in Vietnam, so I think that it is a good time to give you some information about my country, Vietnam. The uh, small and beautiful country in Southeast Asia, and Vietnam is integrating very fast into the region and into the world. And at the moment, Vietnam is a member of 63 international organizations. The government and the National Assembly of Vietnam have issued a lot of uh, legal documents to accelerate the use of ICT in education. This table gives you some statistics about the ICT infrastructure in Vietnam. Well, you can see that the um, total number of the Internet users increases very fast. Taking part in our case study is Hanoi University public university founded in 1979, very well known for the foreign language training, it has the training cooperation with over 30 international universities in the world. And the main mission of the university is to try to become a research university at the regional and international standards in the years to come. And these are the 16 language departments and centers taking part in uh, the case study. And at Hanoi University, ICT is used to teach the different language skills and subjects as you can see in this uh, slide. And the main skills are the listening, speaking, reading, writing, and interpreting and translation. The goal of the case study is to explore the factors which inhibit and enable ICT use in language teaching in Vietnam, taking the case of Hanoi University. I use a mixed methods approach, collected 222 survey questionnaires, interview 43 people, including the university leaderships, ICT staff, and the language teachers. Regarding the theoretical background, this study is based on the technology acceptance model. Two main elements in this model perceived ease of use and perceived usefulness. Well, perceived ease of use uh, refers to the degree to which a person believes that using a particular system would be free from effort. The um, perceived usefulness means the degree to which a person believes that using a particular system would enhance his or her job performance. Next, I'd like to talk about the findings of the uh, research and especially focus on three points. Well, basically, the teachers use the ICT to prepare for the lessons and to deliver those lessons in the classroom. So uh, I start first with the ICT for lesson preparation. 
Well, the results of the research show the following common pattern of ICT use. Uh, the teachers search the internet and download the relevant materials into the computers. And then they design the practice activities uh, using the word processing program, for example, Microsoft Word, and use the um, PowerPoint to prepare the presentation. And after that, they use the um, email to communicate, to share information with other colleagues or students. And the data also show that um, there is not much use of uh, such programs as voice recording, audio editing, mind mapping, video editing, e-lecture making, photo editing, hot potatoes, screencasting, podcast, and voice threads. So those programs or applications are not often used by the teachers because in the eyes of the teachers, these programs are very difficult to use. For classroom teaching, the teachers often use the uh, PowerPoint presentation they have prepared in advance to teach the whole class. And in some classrooms with the internet connection, the teachers use the internet to find additional illustrations for their teaching points. For example, the access to the online dictionaries, uh, encyclopedias for further explanations, or they visit some useful websites, uh, especially designed for language teaching and learning. Uh, teachers also use word processing, like Microsoft Word, for example, you know, especially in the writing class, to show uh, how to just uh, correct the mistakes. And uh, sometimes uh, teachers also use the um, voice recording to uh, record the student's presentations or use that for pronunciation practice. Next, I'd like to talk about the ICT inhibitors. Well, the data analysis suggests three major barriers to ICT use by the teachers. And the most important barrier is the lack of vision. 81.6% of the respondents say that they have never read an ICT plan. They have never seen that before. Even if the document exists, 82.5% agree that this ICT plan has not been disseminated to teaching staff, so they don't know. So without this ICT plan, the language teachers do not know why they need to apply ICT in the teaching, and they lose the sense of direction or the sense of purpose. So the use of ICT becomes spontaneous and cannot develop into a driver of innovation in language teaching and learning. The second barrier is the um, teacher's belief. Say they believe that ICT increases the burden for the teachers. ICT increases the workloads. As a rule of thumb, for one hour of ICT enhanced lesson, the teachers have to spend three to four hours for preparation. So it is very time consuming task for the computers. The Hanu does not lend the laptops to the teachers. The teachers have to use their money to buy the laptops for themselves. In the eyes of the teachers, teaching with ICT is really a burden in terms of money, time, and workloads. The third major barrier is the lack of ICT equipment and lack of ICT training for the teachers. Well, the access to the ICT equipment at Hanoi University is just above average. 58.1% of the respondents uh, have access to the desktop computer. They have to share the desktop with other colleagues. Only a few classrooms have internet access. Most of the computers are located in either computer labs or the main library. So it is inconvenient for the teachers to use computer and internet, especially when they need them. And in terms of the ICT training, over the past two years, teachers receive about five hours in total. Five hours of training in two years. So as a result, most of the teachers say that they do not feel confident or competent in using ICT. Now, I'd like to move on to the teachers' perceptions about the ICT enablers in language teaching. There are also three possible enablers. Perhaps the most important one is the positive attitudes of the teachers towards the ICT use. And in our case study, the results show that 
100% of the respondents are aware of the benefits of the ICT. Most respondents believe that ICT would enhance lesson preparation and improve teaching performance. Many teachers even think that ICT would increase their productivity. However, um, the positive attitudes, they are very important but not enough. The teachers need to actually use the ICT in their daily teaching. The next enabling factor is the perceived ICT usefulness for learning. Well, in the views of most teachers, ICT would promote autonomous learning, facilitate a shift from teacher-centric approach to the learner-centered method. And with the modern technologies, and especially with the wireless internet connection, students can practice language skills ubiquitously, on campus or off campus. And students would be more motivated on the uh, interactive online activities. And some teachers even believe that ICT would help students understand the subjects more deeply and gain better results in their studies. Uh, enhance the employability for the students, students in the future. Perceived ease of use is the third facilitator. Well, in general, uh, the teachers find it easy to use the internet and computers, either for lesson preparation or for classroom teaching. Uh, but interestingly, uh, many teachers find it easy to use ICT to share the teaching experiences with others. Uh, in the past, uh, most of the materials were paper-based and so the teachers did not want to share their resources because they thought that if they shared the resources they would have less resources to use uh, and they, they would lose the power. Uh, but now, when most of the materials are digitalized, so the sharing resources or experiences um, may mean empowerment, collaboration or expansion of knowledge. And so the working culture now is different. Uh, however, a culture of sharing teaching resources and experiences has just taken shape or just at the initial stage at Hano University. This culture needs further cultivating in the future. Well, this paper have just highlighted the um, current use of ICT in language teaching, the um, ICT barriers, and the ICT enablers from the views of the language teachers at Hanoi University in Vietnam. Well, it is important to note that these um, barriers uh, cannot be solved overnight, uh, especially in the context of a developing country such as Vietnam. Uh, however, I believe that a clear understanding of those barriers could possibly help the leadership at different levels to develop an appropriate, constantly updated ICT plan to cope with those challenges and to better integrate ICT into language teaching. This case study is uh, on a small scale. However, I think that we can just withdraw some key messages as follows. An ICT plan needs to be developed with a clear purpose clear expectations and clear vision. And the ICT plan should be disseminated to all staff and should look beyond the current developments in ICT today. Secondly, ICT equipment is very important, yes. But the ICT support and training are even more important and taking into account the specific needs of the teachers. Thirdly, an organizational culture of collaboration and sharing should be cultivated and nurtured. Well, um, I hope that this study could be useful for other training institutions uh, in their endeavor of uh, ICT integration. Well, I think with that, I'd like to thank you very much for listening to my presentation. And if you have any further questions or comments or if you want to have the discussion with me, uh, I can be contacted uh, by email, uh, as you can see on this slide. Once again, thank you very much. Thank you.